We have partnered with a world-renowned RF designer. They have looked at our network, they have looked at what's the most efficient placement and the best location for these towers. The design that we have is so solid. Being able to place your network where you have designed your network means that the customer will have faster data, the customer will communicate better, which is ultimately what the goal should be. We are ready. Turn us on. A group of Toastmasters get robbed at gunpoint. The Prime Minister says government is one step closer to mortgage relief. A young Bahamian baseball player inks a deal with a major league team. Plus, Team Bahamas takes the top spot at an international culinary competition. We've got those stories and more coming up tonight. I'm Dana Smith and MB12 starts right now. A young man is in police custody after reportedly robbing a group of Toastmasters last night. Tonight, they recount their terrifying ordeal to Kyle Joaquin. It was a normal Tuesday evening here at the Red Cross Society. Toastmasters were gathered for their weekly meeting. However, things took a dangerous turn after a man armed with a handgun made his way inside. Wearing blue jeans, a white tee, and a white piece of cloth covering his face, the lone gunman barged into the Red Cross on JFK shortly after 9 last night, just as Toastmasters were wrapping up their weekly meeting, demanding everyone line up and empty their pockets. In a very loud voice, get to the back of the room and put your hands on the wall. This room in the back here. So it was about 12 persons in attendance. So. There was a lot of panicking, but we did follow the instructions and we went to the back, put our hands on the wall. Hunt says just as the gun-wheeling assailant requested, all 12 members were lined off against the wall on the stage. He said the man warned them not to look at him and that it was far easier to give him their money rather than pay a different price. Hunt said while all this was going on, he was afraid and didn't know what to do. After he was um, satisfied that you know, enough items were on the floor. He then um, walked up there to the podium and he picked these things up and it was things like um, wallets, um, cell phone, money, and notes. Hunt says at times he peeked over his shoulder to see what the gunman was doing, but there was one point when he caught him and warned him not to look at him again. One of the executives of the Toastmasters Club said he didn't want to take any chances as he took off his jacket, turned his pockets inside out, and even took off his shoes. Douglas Fox said all he was trying to do was not to show any nerves as who knows what could have happened. But just before the assailant left, Fox said he had one more demand. He asked for the owner of the maroon Jeep parked outside and ordered her to give him the keys. She did just that and he took their belongings and sped off. However, as Fox explains, technology played a major role in the recovery of the Jeep and the woman's cell phone. I went into the phone, there's a, an, there's a device called Android Device Manager, and I, the last phone, I tracked that, okay? I tracked the phone. Before they knew it, Fox said police had arrived. Eventually, the Jeep was found in the Oaksfield area, but not without members being a bit shaken up. Director General of the Bahamas Red Cross Society, Carolyn Turnquest, says aside from a few robberies many years ago, this is the first robbery ever on their premises, and now they will have to spend a bit more money for security upgrades. It's a setback. We have to put in perhaps a camera system, reinforce doors, you know, maybe more security. lighting, security, and maybe even hire a security guard for when persons are having this function. So it's really a setback to us. Just about every night, police are called to the scene of armed robberies here in New Providence. For Hunt, this was the second time he was held up at gunpoint. About four years ago, at my home, I, I was held up um, by someone with a gun, and he gave out the same kind of instructions. Get the hell into the house, get back into the house. But, you know, I, I didn't um, go back into the house. These Toastmasters say they are just glad no one was hurt in last night's incident. 
Police now have a 22-year-old man in custody in relation to this matter. Reporting for NB12, I'm Kyle Joaquin. Commissioner of Police Ellison Greenslade is firing back at Fort Charlotte MP Dr. Andre Rollins, who asserted this week that Greenslade should focus on dealing with violent crime and not appearing as a political cheerleader. Rollins told the NASA Guardian he does not want to hear the commissioner telling him that crime is down with the exception of murder as if that is insignificant. However, Greenslade insisted today he will continue to be a cheerleader for his police officers and that's called good leadership. I cheerleaded yesterday and I will cheerlead again. I'm thanking all of these men and women uh, seated here and seated in front of us for the hard work that they're doing. I'm demonstrating and saying to them as commissioner, I am grateful and I will continue as commissioner. My name is Ellison Greenstate to chair lead them. That's just good business. That's just good leadership. Rollins said it is clear that violent crime in the country is out of control. However, Greenslade said officers have made several arrests and gun and ammunition seizures this week during several special operations. I, I, I think what I owe to Bahamian public is to come to work every day. I owe an obligation to remain focused on my mandate and the mandate is in law. And beyond that, I've given to the public and to my minister and everyone uh, in authority over me a very clearly worded policing plan for 2015. Seven outstanding initiatives that if we are supported and are followed will continue to deliver really good results for the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. It seems government could be closer to achieving its mortgage relief goals. In the House of Assembly this morning, Prime Minister Perry Christie foreshadowed a major announcement on a new mortgage relief plan. Christie spoke following harsh criticisms by FNM leader Dr. Hubert Menace. Vonnie Toot reports. After failing to deliver on his campaign promise to provide mortgage relief for thousands of struggling homeowners, Prime Minister Perry Christie said today government came one step closer last night to making that a reality. His comments came as opposition leader Dr. Hubert Minnis slammed the Christie administration over its failed mortgage relief plan and laid out a plan of his own. Last night I had delivered to me, Mr. Speaker, from one of the major clearing banks a communication that takes us to a major stage that I will speak to when I speak tomorrow, Mr. Speaker, in respect of mortgage relief. We have been waiting on it. It has been communicated to me by one of the major clearing banks in terms of this, Mr. Speaker. And I just want the country to know, Mr. Speaker, that this is a matter that is continuing to, to cause the government and all of the clearing banks to work together towards an ultimate solution to this program. However, Menace was unfazed. He said the plan was a colossal failure and a fiasco from the beginning. The mortgage relief program, which the PLP government promised to put in place, has been a total, total failure. The PLP government operates with no shame. They have no shame, Mr. Speaker. They are shameless. Every year, budget after budget, the PLP claims that this will be the year for a successful launch of mortgage relief. But every year, they have failed to deliver. Christie said he plans to shed light on government's refocused efforts to provide mortgage relief in the House of Assembly on Thursday. A watered-down version of government's original plan was projected to assist more than 1,100 homeowners. However, when it was implemented, officials admitted the program helped fewer than 10. In the meantime, Minnis says Bahamians are disappointed and continue to lose their homes. He said if the Free National Movement wins the next general election, it would put forth legislation to protect Bahamian homeowners. We will require banks and other mortgage lending institutions to discuss and accept reasonable proposals to pay mortgage arrears. We will, by an act of parliament, encourage banks to extend mortgages, delay interest payments, or refinance the terms of the mortgage before they remove a family from their home. Too many poor people, too many people, individuals, Mr. Speaker, have come on hard times. 
especially after paying mortgages for years, only to be thrown out of their homes. This is wrong and will not and should not happen. Reporting for MB12, I'm Vaughn Toot. The Cabinet of the Bahamas has agreed to raise the private sector minimum wage from $150 to $210 per week. The announcement came from Labor and National Insurance Minister Shane Gibson in Parliament this afternoon. You can read more about that in tomorrow's NASA Guardian. When we come back, Clico policyholders protest outside Parliament, so stay with us.